All right, ladies and gentlemen, fellow YouTubers of the day, how's it going? This is Antoine Bayan, as some of you might know. I am an IVB Pro, and today, very simple, I'll give you my five favorite tips for chest training that I've learned in my whole life. And the first one is pre-exhausting the chest at the beginning of the workout. So what that means is that you'll start with a warm-up, kind of movement, superset or one exercise that's more of an isolation one. Like we're doing pec deck. With this today, the goal is not to like uh, really go hard on these ones. It's more to put a lot of blood in the muscle, go past failure, have a pump, and then move on to a bigger movement. You, so um, yeah, you'll never start your workout with bench. If you're a bodybuilder, it, will, it makes zero sense to start your workout with bench. Unless you're 17 year old and you're starting out, that might sound like a good idea, but it's not. All right, start with pec deck, uh, crossover, just like anything, but bench. The, one of the main reasons why is because since your muscle will already be tired, you're gonna lose, uh, you're gonna use less weight in the exercise and the workout afterwards. And um, you'll be more warmed up. Because if you start with bench, you're starting out cold, you're not exhausted at all, you're not tired, so you can use a lot of weight on an exercise that's kind of like tricky, you know, like. Have you ever seen somebody uh, tear a pec on a pec deck or a machine or things like that? I, no, it's always on bench, wide grip inclined bench presses, like things like that. So if you want to do this, they're great exercises for chest, but maybe do them later in the workout if you're a bodybuilder. If you're a powerlifter, then it's different. Take two hours to warm up and do like six sets of, six sets of bench in three hours, you'll be fine. But if you're a bodybuilder who wants to have a big chest, there's other ways than doing bench first. So I love pre-exhausting with the pec deck and uh, the flex storage over there. You can do cable crossovers, you can do uh, another machine. Bench pressing uh, first is not for me. It should be for you either. Second tip, contract the muscle, don't move the weight. Flex the muscle, don't move the weight. And what I mean by that is that in bodybuilding, it's all about the targeted muscle group you chose for that day, right? Today's chest. So if I'm moving the weight like that, you know, the my working the muscle really like maybe a little bit, but to make sure is that you stretch. Like this, this example, let's take the chest for example. The stretchy part is here. The fully contracted part is like right here. So instead of in my head like pushing the weight forward with my hand and just like look at the weight, I'm thinking about this instead, about stretching the chest and contracting it. So even with the weight in my hand, it's it's always that. I'm focusing on this, not the weight, you know? So here, what I'm doing is that I'm stretching the chest here and I'm contracting it. So I could do that with no weight, contracting it like that. Ah. So I'll do the same motion ah, with this. Stretch, squeeze. I'm not like pushing this, like no, I'm like pushing the weight. I'm moving the weight right now, like, but or I'm looking at my chest, feeling it, Boom, 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 boom. They're gonna find that range of motion that's perfect for you. You know, from the stretching part to the contract, contracted part, and just, just moving that moving this, uh, range of motion. Use all the muscle fibers, destroy them all, get a sick pump. Oh, yeah. So here, we're just doing some pyramid, pyramid style sets because uh, we're pretty warmed up because of the other two exercises that we did back to back as a superset. So now I just want to go up and wait a little bit. Um, and I chose decline today because my shoulder was hurting a little bit. And I find it's always safer for the shoulder to do decline presses than incline. And when you think about it, like, uh, let's see here, I don't know if you see it, like, you can see the upper chest is like right here. Lower chest is all this. The chest is mostly lower chest when you think about it so when you're actually doing like dips and decline presses you're working the biggest part of your chest incline is only a little stripe at the, the top watch out drop that thing coming watch out Again. Good 
the... More. Tip number three, no set on the six reps. We're not doing powerlifting here, we're doing bodybuilding. And I used to do sets under six, but I can promise you, only God knows that probably, but I can promise you that I'm pretty sure that the set that made my chest grow the biggest of all the sets I've done in my life wasn't the set of four with 200 pound dumbbells that I did a while ago, it wasn't that. It was probably some crazy set that had extreme contraction, and, you know, and range of motion and pass failure with the, you know, I wonder what that set is actually. I would love to know, but we'll never know. But it wasn't any set of the six that I did. That's my opinion, but I'm pretty sure about that. I think eight is really the minimum I'm gonna try to go, unless it's in a super set and I'm really tired and I'm just fa reaching failure, right? If you're fresh and you're doing your first set, your first fa set to failure of the, of the yeah, if you're using six reps, it's too heavy. And I'm also saying that because most people doing heavy weight with six reps won't have the perfect form. If you're already advanced and your form is perfect and you reach failure exactly at six, then you get two more force reps, then that's good. But I'm saying like as a baseline, as one of the tips I've, that I've learned that really helped me, no reps on the six. Okay, tip number four. Rib cage up, no concave. All right, rib cage up. Oh. Yeah, <clears throat> it's very important because if you, you're like that, the chest won't be able to, first of all, get to the full stretch range of motion, and you're gonna work more shoulders, and it's bad for posture, it just looks, looks dumb too. But hey, trust me, we'll, we'll, I've done that before when I started out, and uh, sometimes I even like, I just lose it a little bit, because if I would train with Mike, a bunch of times he's gonna tell me to bring it up. And even if it's up, you can bring it even more up sometimes. So, rib cage up, no concave. Even Alora, I wanna, even when I bring it down like that, you wanna reach it with your chest and then leave it there for the, the press, right? That that would be normal. Look, normal. Boom. So if you, if you combine that with the tip I did earlier about stretch, stretching and contracting. It's really good. Ooh, yeah. That worked. Last tip of the day. Before I let you guys go to the gym, right? Because this is what you're gonna do now. Last tip, fifth tip. The day before your training chest, don't do tricep or shoulders because you need both of these muscle groups to work chest properly. You don't want your set, your, your, set to, your set to go to failure or to stop because your shoulders and triceps are giving out before your chest. No, no, no. You want all the load on the chest. This is about the chest. Chest day is about the chest. So make sure to remember that tip. No delts or tricep days before chest day. All right, my friends, on that note, get off the couch, get off your ass, get to the gym, all right? <laughs>